a first of its type diesel locomotive that weighs in excess of 100 tonnes. It's special because it was the first of its class to be preserved. It's been our flagship. Can an expert team haul this mega machine over 20 speed sapping miles and drop it off in time for a huge railway gala? It's quite an intensive timetable today, so we can't afford any, uh, any delay. A heavy lift rail crane weighing 140 tonnes. Can a team hit the delivery deadline for this giant to catch a ship to make a sea crossing to Egypt? The team must battle rush hour on the roads. We've out ice before we go on the motorway network. And super tight turns to deliver these monster machines on time. It's a titanic task, even for the world's toughest train truckers. In the heart of the Leicestershire countryside is the Great Central Railway, one of the numerous heritage lines dedicated to preserving our railway history. The Great Central Railway is a restored eight and a half mile section uh, of the former line from Annesley to London Marylebone that represents the only double track heritage railway surviving in Europe. It is one place in the UK where you will genuinely see the true British Railways experience. We've got a total of 15 steam engines, of which eight are currently in everyday service. But for one weekend a year, the steam trains take second place to the mighty horsepower of the diesel locomotives. These icons of the post-steam era are due to take their place centre stage pulling thousands of visitors along the eight and a half mile line between Loughborough and North Leicester for the railway's annual spring gala. At the gala, we'll have a variety of experiences using up to eight heritage diesel locomotives running throughout the day, operating various types of both passenger trains and some selected goods trains. The star of the show this year will be this, fully restored and freshly repainted in original green and yellow livery, Class 37 locomotive number D6700. Introduced into service in 1960, the British Rail Class 37 is a diesel electric locomotive also known as the English Electric Type 3. Class 37s were a later diesel type which were built for general purpose traffic, both passenger and freight, called a mixed traffic locomotive. So they had a top speed of 90 mile an hour. They were quite light. They could go a lot of routes and they replaced steam on a lot of secondary routes. A limited number are still running with some freight operators. They're still quite reliable, even though they're very old. And if they're looked after, they will run forever. This stunning D6700 is in the care of the Heavy Tractor Group, a small band of enthusiasts who have leased it for five years from the National Railway Museum in York. Their aim, to see it back on the rails where it belongs. It was the first of a batch of over 300 built in the early 1960s. It can be seen the length and breadth of the country on freight trains, uh, heavy coal trains, heavy iron ore trains in Motherwell, Immingham, South Wales, and the equal is at home in the Highlands of Scotland putting two or three coaches. After some minor restoration work, the locomotive has been fully safety checked at its current location at the Lorham UK Maintenance Yard in Derby. It can now begin its journey to be the star of the Spring Diesel Gala in Leicestershire. Only one thing stands in the engine's way, 20 miles of steep, speed-sapping hills. Fifty Miles South is a company that devises unique solutions to problems like this. Alley's heavy haulage. Family-run firm Alley's are experts at the challenging task of moving heavyweight railway locomotives. Founded in the 1950s by Morris Alley, the business has grown to become one of the trusted names in the heavy haulage industry. 
We can move anything. Massive abnormal loads, enormous steel girders, mega yachts and super long lengths of pipe, as well as locomotives of all shapes and sizes, are just part of their day-to-day -day operations, both in the UK and around the world. Moving Trades is a very specialist industry, and we're one of the few companies within the UK that can actually move these big trains and locomotives. Nobody expects to see a loco on the back of a lorry. There's never a day when you see it where it's not impressive. Today, the crew needs to be at the very top of their game. No problem. Taking on this mega move are lead driver Zach, escort driver Harry, and ramp builder Dave. It's 7.30 a.m. and the crew are already hard at work. Are the brake box tight now or not? With the Class 37 waiting in the yard to be loaded, Zach and Harry position the trailer perfectly in line with the rails and the ramp, already constructed by Dave. The ramp is made from several fabricated sections, which lead up from the railway tracks to the top of the trailer. The team will use a winch to slowly haul the 100 tons of locomotive painstakingly up the ramp onto the trailer. If the sections of the ramp don't accurately line up or aren't secure, there is a risk the locomotive could tip. With the ramp now in place, the team hook up the D6700. Then inch by inch, winch the engine up on the ramp. All 100 tons of this precious cargo slowly edges up the rails. With the winch cable taking the strain, Zach and Dave have chocks at the ready should it snap. For the team looking after this engine, it's a particularly tense stage of the move. This is always the most nerve-wracking bit because we don't have any control over this. It's basically down to the, the winch and the winch wire. Being trusted with the care of, of this iconic locomotive is, is, is really quite a privilege. Being the first of its kind ever to be built makes this Class 37 engine even more precious. Nothing must go wrong. Inch by inch, the team winched the 100-tonne locomotive onto the trailer. With only the single steel winch cable holding it, if the cable were to snap now, the loco could roll back out of control. Hold it. Success. The D6700 makes it safely onto the trailer. Next challenge, chain it down for the journey ahead. Personally, I like to get uh, 16 chains on as a as a minimum, really. Any movement on the trailer whilst in transit could be catastrophic. Change of point. One, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, and then pretty much good to go, yeah. With the engine secure, next task for lead driver Zach, hit the open road. Yeah, right. Yeah, in your mate. Right, coming back to turn. Just go straight back to that bogey behind me, please. Keep it coming. In fact, go over to your left a little bit, mate, over to the near side as we go back. Yeah, not a problem. The journey for the Class 37 from the depot in Derby to the Great Central Railway in Corn may only be a distance of just over 21 miles, but it has some punishing uphill sections. And when you have a locomotive weighing just over 100 tonnes on the trailer, nothing can be taken for granted. The combined height of the train and the trailer is just under five metres, so Zach's unable to use his rear-view mirrors and must rely on teammate Harry to be his eyes and ears for guidance. How far we got, mate? I was out to the same time as you, mate. I said, how far have we got? You need, you need to talk, like, 20 foot, 10 foot. You've got five metres, yeah. So I keep going. Got four, 
Right, I'm going forwards. Kev, are you the other side of the junction, are you? Let me mind you can come out and drive straight out. Uh, let me know when you're coming down. I'll stop any traffic coming up. Dave might have squeezed the support truck out of the yard, but the exit looks tight for Zach and the engine. Right, for a minute, mate. Snaking the three-metre-wide trailer through this tiny gap is made even harder by a large red rubbish bin and a parked black car. Zach creeps the truck forward. He has just inches to spare on either side. You're right, Bob. Yeah, we're good back, mate. Harry walks behind the trailer and uses a remote control to independently steer the rear axles. Now clear of all obstacles, Zach faces a sharp 90 degree turn to exit the rail yard. There go. Zach needs all his 16 years' experience to negotiate this tricky turn. Here we go. Are you as far over on the left as you can be without being on the curb? Yeah, in a yellow line. Inch by inch, Zach slowly manoeuvres the trailer closer to the exit. Okay, mate, middle of the road, please. Finally, after some great teamwork easing the 18-metre-long trailer out of the yard, this legendary locomotive can begin its journey to Loughborough. But the team will need to make up precious time on the journey ahead. The Great Central Railway's Spring Diesel Gala is the chance for train enthusiasts of all ages to see historic diesel locomotives up close and personal. And at this year's event, there is the chance to see one rather special locomotive, this fully restored Class 37 numbered D6700. This is the first built 37, so this is, this is quite a unique loco and it, it's quite a special loco. This historic locomotive is currently 20 miles away and has been expertly loaded onto the back of a specialist trailer for its road trip from a depot to the railway. After some very challenging manoeuvres, Zach and Harry hit the road later than planned. must deliver the 100-tonne locomotive to the depot in Corn in order to have its final checks ahead of the gala. Are we all right, Bob? Yeah, yeah, right. Well, you got loads of room everywhere. I saw them in dog. Put a touch of it, but you, there's just so much room everywhere. <laughs> just, yeah. With escort driver Harry following closely behind, Zach has the extra pair of eyes he needs. But just a few miles into the journey. Up here a little bit, mate. I'm going to come to a stop, OK? So just stop about 20 foot back and then jump out. Yeah, we'll do, mate. There's a problem. Smoke is pouring from one of the front axles of the trailer. <laughs> they make a close inspection. It's not obvious where the smoke was coming from. Zach checks the height of each axle to make sure that the trailer is perfectly level. We need to make sure that it's running the right height. 
down on the front. Any slight misalignment could cause friction and smoke. Checks done, and with the trailer safe to continue, the team resumed their journey to Corn. Eleven miles southwest, in this railway yard in Burton upon Trent, there's another piece of heavyweight rail hardware that needs transporting across the country. This is a rail crane, weighing in at a massive 140 tons. The crane was used to lift engines and rolling stock along the railway network. It was built by one of the most historic companies in rail transportation history. Cowens and Sheldon were two apprentice engineers who had started out working for the grandfather of all rail transport, George Stevenson, in the 1840s. The Carlisle-based engineering firm that bears their name established a world-class reputation for the construction of rail cranes. You won't see a rail crane very often because they are actually very rarely used, but where they are needed is if there's an accident or a collision on the railways and they need to recover a derailed vehicle and put it back on the tracks. Chances are when they are in use the area will be cordoned off. They're impressive bits of kit because of their capacity. They, they need to be able to lift 100 plus tons which means you need a huge arm and a lot of counterbalance weight which is why the traditional rail crane has two wagons, one each side which is weight to stop it toppling over when it's performing a lift. This rail crane is one of only six working examples of its era and sits in the Nemesis Yard in Burton-upon-Trent. These cranes were built from 1977 in Carlisle, the idea being to replace or supplement initially, then replace the older style of cranes. The crane was withdrawn from service due to its age, there was a perceived life of them, Network are looking at using more modern cranes that lift 125 tonnes. Uh, so these are basically became redundant. Despite no longer being of any commercial use on the British Rail Network, the rail crane is set for a new lease of life over 3,000 miles away in Egypt as part of a track laying programme. The challenge now is for Alali's crew to move it to Southampton Port so it can be loaded onto a ship. The whole thing weighs 140 odd tonnes. To move it, you need to take the two bogies off, which have had to go on separate lorries. So that just leaves this crane section here, the, the four axles with all, all 125 tonne of weight on it. Without separating the front and rear wheel units, known as bogies, the crane and haulage trailer would weigh near to 145 tonnes, dangerously close to the legal limit for what can be transported by road. Trusted with the job of hauling this colossal crane are driver Eric, escort driver Chris and ramp builder Dave. It's the morning of the move. First to arrive on site is Dave. His job is to load the front bogey section. He starts by precision parking the trailer to line up with the rails. Let's do it then. The front bogey weighs nearly eight tons, so the plan is to use the trailer's own integral ramp to help load it on board rather than build a custom one. But Richard is concerned. Is that going to go up there? It's a bit. Oh, sure. You reckon? Worse than that. Okay. With the ramp in place, it's over to Richard to uncouple the three units. We're just going to set this up for uncoupling the bogey, so uh, leave it to unlock. All 125 tonnes of the middle crane unit is now uncoupled from the front and rear sets of bogies. Next, the team raised the rail crane's jib arm to allow the front bogey to roll freely. OK, Zach, we'll travel blue direction. Travel blue direction. Travel blue. Slowly, the whole unit moves forward, pushing the front bogey closer to the ramp. 
keep coming. It's going to be a bit tight. About two foot to go. Keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. And stop there. Stop, stop, stop. But with just inches to go, they hit a glitch. The holder for the jack feet is fell to the ramps before the wheels have actually got there, so it's going to damage the ramp, so uh, we might have to put an additional ramp in. As the crew winch the front wheel unit onto the ramp, there's a risk that the low-slung concrete counterweight stored underneath the bogey could buckle it, causing the load to come off the rails. I mean, we could try it with the road crane on there, I suppose, but it's a bit... Let's try the fish plates first. Trust me, I'm a doctor. <laughs> they reverse the whole unit back by a few feet. Then add special plates in front of the ramp. OK, Zach, travel wide, travel wide. These plates are usually used to attach the rails together. But here, the team deploy them to help make a shallower approach to the ramp. OK, it's clear, it's on. The slight angle adjustment of the ramp now enables the team to winch the front bogey inch by inch onto the trailer. Well, I've just got to put my levers back. <laughs> if you're happy, I'm happy. Now, securely on the trailer, the team lock the axles in place. Right, that's that. The team need to haul the 125-tonne rail crane and the two detached wheel units 160 miles from Burton-upon-Trent to the dockside at Southampton. This journey will mainly be along wide-open motorways, but as they approach their final destination, the roads become narrower. Next job for the crew, load the much larger and heavier crane section. Ramp builder Dave uses his trailer's crane to lift the ramp sections off his trailer. Dave needs to carefully position and bolt each section together. Their alignment must be spot on with the rails that run in the concrete. Otherwise, the load could get stuck or topple. Ramp built, bead driver Eric and his support driver Chris carefully manoeuvre the nine-axle trailer into the yard. Chris uses a remote control to steer the rear axles of the trailer, making light work of this tight 90-degree turn. Slowly, trailer and ramp edge closer. Years of experience from Chris ensures that ramp and trailer are perfectly positioned. What we're going to do now, we're going to set the trailer so it's the exact same height as the ramp, and we've got a nice angle on the trailer so it's a gentle pull all the way up. I don't think I moved much. The team attach the winch cable to the crane and slowly haul it up the ramp. One hundred and twenty-five tons of solid steel crane doesn't move quickly. Eric must keep a watchful eye on the rails. After twenty nerve-shredding minutes, the crane has made it safely onto the bed of the trailer. The next challenge, how to secure it. Just see where we can fasten it onto the trailer safely. Eric uses eight chains to lock the crane in place. Everything has to be done to an exact method. 
Well, well, the art to securing them is that the only way you can move because it's sat on rails is forward and backwards. So you need enough chains on it to stop any movement, any initial movement. On something this way, you probably need four pulling this way and four pulling that way, both sides. And, that, and that's enough then. And then with the brakes on as well and chock, that, that, that's normally enough. With the chain secure, Richard applies the handbrake, but Eric has something far more pressing on his mind. It's a cup of tea time, and then uh, we're ready to go. So finally, everything is good to go. Once they've had that cup of tea, that is. However, there are a lot of miles that need to be driven before their day is over. In Staffordshire, heavy haulier Eric and escort driver Chris have just loaded one of the country's last remaining 125-ton rail cranes onto their lorry and are now on their way to deliver this massive load to Southampton docks. Go on, Eric, you're all good. The crane is due to be shipped to Egypt to work on a track-laying project. It's a journey of almost 160 miles, mainly on motorways which will help with the ever-constant battle against the clock. And the good news doesn't stop there. Well, at least it's not raining, Chris. Yeah, you could say that. With an abnormal load of this weight and length, Eric needs Chris to be an extra pair of eyes and ears for the whole journey, alerting him of any hazards on the road. Yeah, it's all clear, Chris. There's cars there, look. Their journey is slow. Travelling up a steep incline with a weight of 125 tonnes on the trailer reduces their speed to less than 30 miles an hour. This is out of a bank, this, isn't it? Yeah. You want to push from the uh, mighty Merc? Well, I would, but the gearbox would probably give way if you try to push. <laughs> Restrictions dictate where and when vehicles of this size and weight can travel on the busiest roads. Slow moving loads like this could cause major traffic congestion during rush hour. After negotiating the punishing incline, the crew are beaten by the clock. We're at Warwick Services now. Uh, we could continue a little bit longer, but there's no guarantee we'd get safely parked if we went any further. So uh, we'll lay up here because it's daylight still and it's coming up to the rush hour now. It's the end of the day for Eric and Chris, who must now park up for the night. Tomorrow will be an early start if they are to get this slow-moving mega load to Southampton on time. Just south of Derby, Zach and Harry, transporting the historic 100-ton diesel-electric locomotive, are approaching a steep incline. Zach's concerned. Bob, just make sure you're well back on this hill, please, because I'm going to be quite slow in a minute. Just leave a good two or three lorries between the two of us, please. Yeah, not a problem. Hills like this are all part of the job, and all they can do is watch the traffic pass by. Make it to the top of the hill, but another challenge lies ahead. Oh, 
I'm doing a right here, Harry, so I'm going to be quite close to the lights on my left-hand side now, OK? Yeah, not a problem, mate. Even though the traffic is light, this right turn is still a challenging manoeuvre. Right, you the lights, mate. Going. Progress is slow as Zach creeps through the corner. Oh, keep it going, you're right. Harry is driving behind, keeping watch on the trailer. He keeps in constant contact with truck driver Zach. Beautiful stuff. Finally, they've made it through. How close to the ground did the back get then? Was it close? It wasn't too bad, too fair. With the 21 mile journey almost over, the team approached the entrance to the depot yard. Right, Bobby? Yeah, you got loads of room, mate. Go on. But access is tight, and again, it's a team effort. Harry guides Zach down the narrow slip road. Go on, keep it going. You're going to get close to this right hand side, but you're sweet as a minute. They arrive at the yard on time to unload, but here they face another problem. Zach needs to line the trailer up exactly in position with the ramp that has already been built. However, a black fuel wagon blocks the rails in front. This means Zach must slowly maneuver forwards and backwards to edge the locomotive in place. This slow shunting, forwards and backwards, is the only way Zach can get the trailer lined up. It's vital that the trailer lines up perfectly with the ramp. Even small deviations could cause big problems when they unload. The team need to achieve inch-perfect accuracy. Finally, this historic locomotive and the trailer line up spot on with the ramp. Uh, the winch is on now. Uh, we just took the brakes off the loco. Um, there's a few chains. There's a few chains to come off, and then uh, and then that's it. Then we'll be slowly winching off down the ramp back onto the back onto the rail. With the ramp sections in place, Dave packs out the gaps with small blocks of wood to keep it steady. Do you want to pick it up instead? Well, if you can, it'd be heavy. But sometimes good old-fashioned brute force is needed. Ah, that's better. That's gone down a bit. Huh? Uh, Do you want some on the other I'll side? Just, I'll just make use of him for one more. <laughs> Yeah. Next, the team released the chains. Oh. Gonna grab your chalk then, Dave. Okay, well I'll wait till you tell me. Right. To you then. Harry keeps a steady hand on the winch as the massive engine gently eases off the trailer. OK, Dave. Tension is high as the locomotive leaves the trailer and transitions down onto the ramp. If 
the locomotive was to slip from the rail, it could cause a major delay in unloading. Or even worse. Smell that too straight. Oh. Is it bad that I really like it? Turn the smell of that to the smell of diesel. The wheels line up with the rails. A successful unload. Okay, Dave. Go on, keep going. Get clear of them points. Zach places a chock in front and behind a wheel to just make sure it's going nowhere. Okay, Zach. Yes, Dave. And finally, the crew can hand over the locomotive to the Great Central Railway for a once-over before the Spring Diesel Gala. In a lay-by at Warwick Services, it's an early start for driver Eric as he and escort driver Chris get ready for the second leg of the journey to Southampton Docks, transporting this 125-tonne railway crane. It's all computerised now to check the oil. There's no dipsticks on these trucks. So computers may handle the routine engine checks, but when you have a load the size of this crane, nothing can be left to chance. Well, we're planning to uh, leave here once we've done all our daily checks. Uh, the most we can drive for is four and a half hours, so that may or may not get us to Southampton, so we may have to stop for a 45-minute break on the journey. And perhaps the most important check of all, inspecting that nothing has happened to the hydraulic trailer overnight. Eric must make sure that each axle is set to an identical height. Whoa. If any of the axles have shifted overnight and the trailer is now tilting, then the load could become unstable or even worse, fall onto the carriageway. Just checking our heights before we go onto the motorway network. We obviously don't want to be too high for going under the motorway bridges. So just making sure the trailer is at the correct height. We know that we're good then for all the bridges. Yeah, I'm ready to go as soon as you're ready, Chris. Yeah, go on then. Eric and escort driver Chris set off for the final 109 miles to Southampton Docks. Right, the back of the one now. Yeah, there's loads of part lorries here. The ones that are too lazy to go in the lorry park. The problem with these services is you come out straight into a hill. After a testing six-hour trek, Eric, Chris and the historic rail crane arrive at the docks in Southampton. I must admit I could do with a bit of a stretch. Oh, well, he might be able to keep up with me. It's the end of an era for this crane in the UK, as it is loaded onto a ship to start the journey of over 3,600 nautical miles to Port Said in Egypt, where it will begin its new life, helping to expand the Egyptian railway network. the day of the Great Central Railway's annual spring diesel gala in Loughborough. And it's the one day of the year no one wants to miss. Eight historic locomotives will be running along the eight miles of double line track to provide more than 4,000 passenger journeys. It is a social event. 
it's going back in time, it's relaxing, and it's also learning a bit of history. I think today it's really good, especially on the Great Central, because of the double track. So you've got a really extensive timetable, lots of trains running. A good gala with lots of attractions there will get a lot of people there, and that is a good, good bumper payday for any Heritage Railway to plan properly. Friends of ours that we're also here today with, they're very much into the train spotting world. So they, they love traveling around and they love looking at the Class 37s. And there's one particular locomotive that people have come to see. The D6700 diesel electric, delivered by the heavy haulage crew. This 100 ton piece of our national railway heritage was hauled by road and up horsepower sapping inclines to get here. So today is a very special day for both this historic locomotive and Andy Gillett, one of the small group of enthusiasts entrusted with its safekeeping. Had a couple of test runs at the weekend where we ironed out a few little niggles. It's quite an intensive timetable today, so we can't afford any, uh, any delay. Fingers crossed it will work as advertised today. For Andy, Today isn't just about making sure the D6700 runs smoothly on paper. He's also got a vital job to do on the rails. So I'll be uh, calling out signals to the driver and doing the young couple and the coupling up when we run round at Leicester. After all the years spent in the National Railway Museum, this historic Class 37, the first ever to be built, is just moments away from pulling passengers again. I'm just waiting for the guard to do his brake test now. A final whistle. <laughs> and all 100 tonnes of historic locomotive pull out of the station. Hopefully they're enjoying it. We're taking it easy, obviously, for the first couple of days. She's not run for a while to make sure all the systems are working properly, but at the moment she's doing OK. The D6700 may be over 60 years old, but it's running like new. Testament to the passion of the engineers and enthusiasts who ensure our railway heritage is preserved for future generations. As the highlight of the weekend's gala, enthusiasts flock to see this unique locomotive. Back in operation, decades since it rolled out of the factory and into railway history. Stream more from the train truckers for free on UK TV Play, where you'll find the entire new and exclusive series. And follow the most sought after of second hand cars to auction in Yorkshire next on Yesterday. It's Bangers in Cash.